Hi folks, now I know what you're going to say, didn't you do, just do a video yesterday? I did, uh, and a pretty naff one it was too, I'm afraid, I should have really redone it. Anyway, as I said at the end of that video, uh, today was the Kendall Record Fair, and as is my want, I came back with a ton of stuff. So, if I don't show it now, it'll just be... Well, either never get shown or back up with it because I've got a ton of other stuff to show. Um, so yeah, it was pretty successful. Came back with twenty odd albums. Um, I thought in in the last few that I've attended, there I'd pretty much uh, seen off the the two pound crate of stuff. Uh, uh, but well, yes and no. The two pound crate has now become three pound, but there were a lot, quite a lot of new interesting items in there that I thought it was worth taking a risk on. Um, so let's get started and I'll show you what I got. We'll start off with a massive disappointment. This is Renaissance's Ashes Are Burning, an excellent album. I love Renaissance. And why is it a disappointment? This was in the three pound bin, by the way, because when I get it home and I have a proper look, which I should have done when I was there, the album inside isn't Renaissance, Renaissance Ashes Are Burning, but it's an album called Together by Brown's Home Brew. I didn't know who Brown's Home Brew were. I looked them up and it turns out it was a band... Uh, that did two albums and the the leader was Joe Brown who might not mean anything to non-Brits but he was quite a popular uh, musician and actor and all-rounder uh, in Britain particularly in the 60s and 70s uh, he's got a reputation as a bit of a musician's musician probably should have been far more popular than he was um, so, I don't know what I'll do, <laughs> to be honest. That was, I mean, I was surprised to find this in three pound bin, but really excited. So, it's a shame. So let's get on with the other stuff then. Like I say, a lot of this was from three pound bin. First off, Fairport Conventions album Rosie. This is from 1973 and the band at this time were uh, obviously Dave Swarbrick on fiddle, Dave Pegg on bass, Dave Mattox on drums, Trevor Lucas on acoustic guitar and vocals and Jerry Donahue on electric guitar. It's probably one of their weakest albums. Uh, it's got one or two decent tracks on it. But I thought I'd get it to, just to fill the hole in the my Fairport collection. I don't know if it was this one, but I think this it might be this album that was originally meant to be a Dave Swarbrick solo album, or am I thinking of the one that just was called Fair? Went under the title, name of Fairport. Anyway, like I say, it fills the hole. Next up. John Byers' Diamonds and Rust. Now, I'm not a massive John Byers fan. I, I like her vocals, but uh, this is the album, obviously, that features that, that title track. I mean, she's mostly known as an interpreter of other people's material and folk material. But this is Diamonds and Rust was a song that she wrote, I think, about Dylan. And... Uh, it's a really good song and it was covered very well actually uh, by Judas Priest on one of their albums. So I think I heard this way back in the 70s. Like I said, this album is, was 75, was released January 75. So I'm looking forward to that. It should be good. Ah. 
fill in another hole in my Planksky and Folk collection, their album The Well Below the Valley. This is from I think 1973. I think this might have been their second album on the Polydor label. But you can't go wrong with Planksty. Three pounds. I'm not going to argue. Ah, next. My first Walter Carlos album. This is Sonic Seasonings. Double, double for three pounds. Looks in good nick as well. And this is four side long pieces, each one um, devoted to one of the seasons. Don't know what this is going to be like. I've never listened, really listened too much of uh, Walter Carlos or Wendy Carlos's work. But I know she's a, uh, a pioneer in the electronic genre. So it's well worth trying. Next up, a bit of prog. Druid. And their second album, Fluid Druid. Which is from 1976. Still burnt. I think it's is it on the EMI label. Yeah, it's on the EMI label. They were meant to be uh, sort of yes light, but I remember I think here in a truck or two years back, and quite enjoying it. Mind you, I'm a massive yes fan, so. Again, for the price, well worth trying. Ah, next up, a bit of jazz. And we have Russ and Roland Kirk with the inflated tear. Here we go. This album, this is an, an 68 album, but this is a German pressing from 1976. I mean, I would just, it's on Atlantic. Just recently I watched a documentary, I think, on, it's on Netflix, I think, I can't remember, uh, about Roman Kirk, which was fascinating. So I'm excited to hear that, see what that's like. I mean, what the music that was in the documentary was good, so that should be good. I don't know how that ranks in his pantheon of works. Next, an album I, I think I had on cassette or something way back in the day. If you put, can't remember, Jimi Hendrix Crash Landing. Now this is was a, one of the very controversial albums brought out after his death by Alan Douglas, where I think he took tapes and added other musicians to Jimmy's guitar playing. But I remember this being quite good, particularly I think Message to Love uh, and Peace in Mississippi, two of the tracks I remember being quite very good. So I thought, I think this was a fiver, so I'll give this a go again. I know probably a lot of the original tapes have been brought out properly now, but it should be good. It's Hendrix. Next up, another excellent guitarist, the great Roy Buchanan, and his album Rescue Me. Now this is a UK pressing of uh, from 19 from, of a 1974 album, which I think was called In the Beginning in the States, but for some reason was re renamed Rescue Me, or well, after the first track over here. Big fan of uh, Rob Buchanan, I think he's an excellent guitarist. Doesn't always get the acclaim he, he's due. Next up, I think I might be taking a bit of a risk with this. Chick Corea and Return to Forever. This is actually a career album. I think this is predated, I think, the Return to Forever band. This is from 1972. And it's on ECM. Uh, but I think this might be a reissue, a later reissue. 
Um, the reason I say that I might be taking a bit of a punt on this is that I recently got the uh, Return to Forever live album where Flora Purin, who is on here, uh, sings on some tracks. And as I said at the time, I generally like my jazz to be instrumental. But again, it wasn't expensive, so I thought it's excellent, Nick. We'll give that a try. Another one that I'm giving a try to is the Graham Edge Band. This was from the three pound bin with their album Paradise Ballroom. The Graham Edge Band was obviously Graham Edge of the Moody Blues on drums with the Gervitz brothers, uh, Paul Gervitz on bass and vocals and Adrian on guitar, keyboards and vocals. I don't really know what to expect of this. I'm not sure I've ever heard anything by them. I expect it with the Gervitz brothers, I half expect it to be sort of sort of hard rock. But three pound, it's got to be worth a try. Ah, one I've got on CD, but I've never seen anything any of theirs stuff in the wild. This is the Young Bloods uh, with their album Ride the Wind. Uh, this is from recorded in 1969. Ride the Wind were a sort of folk rock um, the Young Bloods were a sort of folk rock uh, band uh, with their most famous member being Jesse Colleen Young. Uh, but the other they were a trio, the other two were the greatly named Banana on guitar and piano and John, Joe Bauer on drums. This is really good stuff, actually, if you like American folk rock. Next up, a bit of hard rock. And the and Steppenwolf. This is, uh, the, this is a first pressing, U US pressing of their first album, which obviously features their massive hit, Born to be Wild. It also features the Pusher, the Hoyt Acton song that they became famous for. I, I really like uh, Steppenwolf, so I'm really pleased to find that. And not just happy with having one, I had to go with two. But I might have made a bit of a mistake here. This is Steppenwolf Live, which uh, this is a... Um, the UK pressing on stateside, the stateside label. Uh, and I say, why I say it, it might be a mistake is I didn't realise that this originally came out as a double album in the States. So it, it would have been nice to get a US pressing of the double album. Well, it was recorded at various concerts in early 1970. Features Born to be Wild and the Pusher. Great stuff. Next up, an album by The Amazing Blondell. And this is just their 1973 album, just called Blondell. Now, The Amazing Blondell were a sort of medieval folk rock band. Though I must admit on this, I think they might have dropped some of the medieval uh, traits. It's on the, oops, it's on the Island label. I've never heard this one. I've got, I think is it Fantasia or something, that the, an early album of theirs, which is very good. Like I say, I, I, I don't think this has the, those, medieval uh, stylings. In fact, you get Paul Rogers featured on uh, vocals on one track. Um, bass guitar is by uh, Steve Winwood. The drummer is Simon Kirk. And harpsichord played by Adrian Hopkins. It's 
So, oh, cheap, worth having a go. Like I said, they were a good band before that, so hopefully they still are. Next up, John Mayall's Bare Wires. This is his 1968 album on Decca. Um, now he's obviously famous for all of these personnel in his bands. At this time, he had Chris Mercer on tenor and baritone saxes, Dick Hextel Smith on tenor and soprano sax, John Heisman on drums and percussion. Now there's two members of Coliseum, Henry Lowther on cornet and violin, Mick Taylor on guitar and a Hawaiian guitar, and Tony Reeves on bass. So all of those I think are superb musicians. Don't think I've ever heard this album, but all I, I like all of his early uh, 60s and early 70s albums. And the guy is still touring. He must be in his early 80s or something. I saw him once with Peter Green as support, and at that time he was in his 70s. <laughs> right? Ah, I've heard great things about this one. This was, I think this was uh, about five or six quid. This is Sonny Rollins, Saxophone Colossus. Um, this is a 1964 album on Prestige, but this is the Prestige label you might normally see. This is one distributed by when it was distributed by Fantasy Records. So I made a note of, I think of when this was. This is from 1972, it's a reissue from 1972 of the 64 album. Like I say, I've heard great things about this. And as I'm getting more and more into jazz, I thought I'd take a stab on it. The band, along with Sonny Rollins, uh, uh, Tommy Flanagan on piano, Doug Watkins on bass, and Max Roach on drums. Another uh, jazz giant, Charles Mingus, with his album Mingus, 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 Mingus. <laughs> uh, it's on Prestige. It was originally recorded in 1963. But this is a US pressing from 1976 on the ABC. Impulse label. Would have been nice if it was a, an original Impulse, but still you can't have everything. It's my first Mingus album, so I'm excited to give that a listen. Described as ethnic folk dance music. <laughs> Next up, oh, a big favourite of mine, Al Stewart, the Scottish um, singer-songwriter with his album Orange. This one, what year was Orange from? I'm trying to remember. 72, 1972 on CBS. Again, this is a reissue of, I think, rather than the original. He's a great uh, singer-songwriter in my books. I love his material. And on here you get uh, most of the Brinsley Swartz band. Brinsley on 12-string acoustic guitar. Bob Andrews on organ. Bruce Thomas on bass. And you also get, obviously, Rick Wegman on piano and organ. Excellent. Still more. Next up, Dave Greenslade's Cactus Choir. 
Now he's back to Greenslade. What I loved, particularly the first two albums. But I don't I've never heard this one. This is his first solo album from um, 1976. Obviously with the Roger Dean cover. And it's on Warner Brothers. Can you see that? I don't expect it to be as good as the band itself, but he's, a, he's an excellent keyboard player, so I'm sure it'll, it'll be of interest, it'll be good. I mean, the, his backing musicians tend to be people like Simon Phillips on drums, on um, Tony Reeves on bass, who was in Greenslade with him. Yeah. No. That should be very good. Ah, a massive favourite one I've been wanting for a long time. Prokos Harem's Home. Is this the fourth album? Can't really remember. This is it's from when was it released? Let's have a look. Nineteen seventy. And this is an original UK pressing on the Regal Zonophone label and looks in immaculate condition. This is a bit more pricey than us. I think I paid 15 for this, which is still pretty good. Okay. Like I say, it's in immaculate condition and it has the, the insert. Which one of the first things that usually disappears and is in excellent condition. I love early Procol Harum. The only one now I think I'm missing from my collection is Shine On Brightly. Now, I might have been disappointed with my uh, supposed purchase of the Renaissance album, but I did find their album Share Zada and other tales, other stories. This is from. Da, 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 when was this? this isn't their 1975 album. And this is excellent, excellent stuff. On the BTM Records label. They did a. a probably with Ashes Are Burning, this and. Uh, the one with Mother Russia. Turn of the Cards. It's three superb albums, plus the live album, which is excellent. We're getting towards the end, folks, don't worry. Next up, back to jazz. The cheapy. Mark Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Child's Dance. This is a later album from 19... 72. Uh, this is a German pressing, direct mantel mastered from digital tape, unfortunately. And it's on Prestige again. Never seen this particular version of the label. I like uh, what I've heard so far of Art Blakey. I've only got one album, but I've heard a lot of other stuff. And I love uh, most of his music. Okay, this is a bit later than the, the other stuff I've heard, which tends to be from the 60s. Uh, who's in the band at the time? Obviously, apart from Art on drums. Woody Shaw on trumpet. R Ramon Morris on tenor sax. George Cable on piano, electric piano. Stan Clark on bass. Ray Mantilla on congas. Manny Floyd on flute. That's on side one. On side two, apart from this, those same guys, you've got Buddy Terry on soprano sax, John Hicks on electric piano, Mickey Bass on bass, Nathaniel Bettis, Sonny Morgan, and Pablo Landrum on percussions. 
and Emmanuel Rahim on congas. Looking forward to that. It could be very interesting. And another big favourite, Spirit, with I think, is this their first album? The family that plays together? From, when was it from Spirit? Much can't remember when this came out. 1969, though this is a later pressing reissue. Uh, Discogs doesn't have a, a year for this, no years mentioned. It's a UK pressing. The Spirit was an awesome band. With a great band in California on guitar. And this this feature is probably one of the best songs I've got a line on you. Excellent. And the last two. Well, I was really pleased. These are the ones that cost me the most. I was really pleased to find. First off is Third Ear Bands, Alchemy. Third Ear Band, if you don't know, were, um, were a sort of band that infused Baroque folk and Eastern influences with experimental rock. Um, a superb band. This is, album was from 1969. The band at the time were Glenn Sweeney, who's the main guy, on tabla, hand drums and wind chimes. Paul Minns on oboe and recorder. Richard Coff on violin and viola. And Mel Davis on cello and slide pipes. So you can tell that you get, you're getting sort of like chamber music, experimental chamber music. Um, but you've also on one track got the great John Peel on Jaws Harp. And this is an original UK pressing on the Harvest label. That's got one of my favourite label designs. I love that. Love the colours, love the design. So I was pretty stoked to find that. And now the, the one album that has been a grail for a long time and I've been keep, keep on having a look on Discogs for a decent copy at a decent price. When I saw it at the uh, record fair, I knew I had to have it. And it's in superb condition. And it's the Pentangle's last album before they split, The Solomon Seal. This is from 1972. It features the lyric sheet, which is very flimsy, I must admit. And this is on, oops, on the Reprise Records label. This doesn't always get the love it deserves, but it is an excellent album. I don't think Pentangle did a bad album in this period. And I might be right, I might. I think this might be the first album of theirs which actually features electric guitar. John Renborn plays electric on three, four of the tracks, five of the tracks. I was, like I said, I've been looking for this for ages. I ended up paying 25 quid for this. I wanted 30, I knocked them down. <laughs> um, but that, look at it, it's immaculate. Really pleased with that. Bloody hell, we're on, th sorry, my language, we're on 30 minutes. Right, that's everything I bought. I hope you enjoyed seeing those. I've got tons more to show. Um, some really interesting stuff, I think. 
I've noticed a lot of it's from France, so the next one might be have a th French theme to it. Anyway, take care, everybody. All the best.